Hello, Lake Erie Council. It is halfway through the week. It's Wednesday, and today is our Bear Den meeting. So it is our Marble Madness Day, and today we have Julia with us, and we're pretty excited about that. And we are going to have some fun. So we're going to start off. Uh, Julia, do you want to start us off with the pledge, the oath, and the law? That sounds fantastic. Perfect. Go for so, it. Scouts, welcome. And if you are in a uh, uniform, it'll be scout salute. If not, let's go ahead and put our hand over our heart. And I'm going to go ahead and start us off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so now signs up. And we're going to do the um, oath on my honor i will do my best to do my duty to god and my country to help other people at all times to keep myself physically strong and mentally awake and morally straight and now we're going to do the scout law scout is trustworthy loyal helpful friendly courteous kind obedient cheerful thrifty brave clean and reverent okay so i'm excited to have people here today and we are going to be doing, as Brittany said, Marble Madness. Um, so Brittany, I think you're gonna go over our requirements with us. Yes, we sure are. And if you are here, we'd love to hear from you in our comments. Go ahead and uh, say a hello down there. Okay, we're gonna start off by going over a little bit. So in this act adventure, we're gonna learn about a game that has entertained people since the time of ancient Egypt and has been an important part of scouting since its early days. We're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna experience individual competition and teamwork and helping others and learning rules and being a good sport. So our requirements that we're gonna go through today, we're gonna discuss the history of marbles, such as where and when the game began. We're gonna talk about the different sizes of marbles and what they're made of and used for. And number two, we're gonna learn about three different marble games and learn to play one of them and learn how to keep score, learn and follow the rules of the game and then play it. We're gonna learn number three, learn four or five words that are used when talking about marbles. We're gonna tell what each of the words means and how it relates to playing marbles. And then for four, you have to choose A, B, C or D, which could be, and then, um, Number five, you could also choose to do uh, make a marble bag. So we've got some fun things to start our day off. Uh, Julie, you want to get us going? Yes, I want to welcome all of our MIPSters here. Um, and we're going to get down to play a little marble and um, maybe um, get out your shooter and um, get to the ring. And um, when you're doing that, remember to knuckle down and um, Want to make sure you get some good hits. Um, no miss. Um, might need to circle around. And one of my favorite things is to go bowling. Wait, we're playing marbles and I'm talking about bowling. What do you think, Brittany? Hmm, that sounds weird. We're not going to the bowling alley. Okay, well, you know, I'm, you know, can get a little lofty here. And um, now I didn't know about playing for keeps or if we're going to play fair. What do you think? Hmm. I think we're going to play for, you think, what about fair? Okay, well, I was kind of thinking that I really wanted to play for keeps, but oh. um, that usually means when you're doing it, um, when you play the game and the marbles go out, I would get to keep your marbles. Oh. Um, and then like the next time we play, we do that. But I think I want to make this a little more interesting. Okay. Like playing for something a little tastier, like Ooh. maybe some maple syrup. I like or that. Maybe playing for some cornbread mix or some pancake mix. Um, now you can see I already have this here, and I if um if uh, I win, you would have to give me one of my favorites. But if you win, I would have to uh, get one of these over to you. Oh, okay. and different things. So um, now you're going to ask. Well, what what am I? What should we pay play for? Because we want to be even here. Yeah. Now, do you, this is a bottle of Scout's own maple syrup. Do you remember how much that cost? 
Is it 12? That is $12. Now, remember how much a bag of the corn mix is? Uh, 10. That is $10. And the pancake mix is also $10. Yes, but I know that these two items each are 10, but I really want to go for something sweet. So if, um, if I win, I want you to um, buy me a bottle of maple syrup. Okay, I think I can do that. You think you can do that? Do you know how to, how to buy it? Uh, don't you just go onto the Scout Zone website? Yes, you are right. And you can, you can order it and it can be sent to me and we can remain um, nice and distance because um, you know, right now you're, you're in Ashtabula and I'm here in Cleveland. So, but let's get back to playing some marbles. And, uh, and if anyone has questions, they can always go to the website to learn more about um, the Scout's Own Maple Syrup because it's delicious, isn't it? Mm-hmm, it's tasty. Okay, so um, we, we start off talking a little bit about the history and you said that um, marbles have um, been played from back in the Egyptian times? Do you At know least. how they know that? How? Um, so have you ever heard of Pompeii? It was a, a, an area, a city that had a volcano to erupt and it covered the, um, the city and it kind of froze everything in time. And then when the um, archeologists started and they found the city and they started to excavate it, they could find um, what everyone was doing when the um, volcano erupted because it just kind of like covered everyone and, and, and encapsulated and they actually found where people were playing marbles. Oh really? And, yeah and um and the other thing is archaeologists have found that Native Americans um would play marbles in different things. Oh. So um so so it kind of has a long history. You're not really sure exactly a pinpointed date when it started. It's not like Oh, when Monopoly started and you go, oh, you know, in the 1920s, someone developed that board game. So this has quite a history. Quite a history. Um, one thing I thought was interesting when I was reading about it, you know, marbles and the marbles were made of a variety of different things. But in the mid um, 19th century, about 1850s, um, this one gentleman came up with a way to be able to mass produce clay marbles. And do you know where that person was from? Where? Right here in Ohio, Akron, Ohio. And wow. Akron became known as the marble capital of the world. They were able to produce you know, like uh, rail cars, like millions of marbles every day and ship them all over the world. So, you know, a lot of people would think of marbles back in the 1800s, early 1900s, and they would think of the great state of Ohio. Wow, that's an awesome fact. Yeah, and you know, we, marbles were played by children pretty much all the time and were very popular until unfortunately World War II and rationing. And so the materials used in energy and things to make the marbles got redirected in the war efforts and it really didn't pick back up again we kind of in the 1970s kind of had a surge in people playing marbles mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping that with this and maybe more children will will get to to learn about and and start to enjoy the the joys of playing marbles and um maybe we'll get the popularity going again that'd be fantastic so now um before i lose my marbles um <laughs> we'll talk about a few of the a few of the um some other things about them. Okay. Let's see. You got some nice posters there. Yeah. Oh, look. I also have a brand new, fresh off the press um, poster about an upcoming event that our council is going to be doing um, to help people out um, in this time of. Um, um, of, need, of, of, of the pandemic, pandemic and everything yeah that um you know people are still you know um, needing death, blood transfusions and this is a way that um parents and <laughs> excuse me can can come and help out the american red cross we're going to have wednesday june 3rd at the council office we're going to have a blood drive and um 
So really hoping people can come out and do that. If they have questions, they can always call um, the American Red Cross and just say it's with Lake Erie Council or they can um, reach out to the Lake Erie Council and reach out to me. I'm Julia Hearn or Kermit Matlock and we will gladly answer any questions and help get people signed up. Okay, let's get back to the types of marbles. Since I was kind of saying about, you know, marbles had been around for a really long time, um, they were originally made of stone. And sometimes it would just be someone would find um, a marble that, um, a, a, a rock that was nice and polished and round naturally um, to play with. Um, so that was the ones made of stone. Then when I said clay, um, that's when they became very popular and the person in Akron um, was able to mass produce them. So there were clay marbles and then porcelain. Porcelain, I think, is like a finer china. And so, uh, believe it or not, uh, marbles were made of uh, porcelain. And then glass, which is most of the marbles that you maybe get now, are made of glass. And then I even have um, like steel ones. Um, so this is um, actually, I also shoot black powder. So that's also one of my balls from black powder, but you could use that to also play, play marbles. And it's, you know, really heavy. It's a lead ball. And um, so I don't know whether it's going to cause an advantage or a disadvantage when we go to play. Mm. And, uh, and so, and they can even be made out of, out of steel. So, and so with all the different types of marbles, and I've got a couple of samples of them right here. Um, you know, they started giving them names. So like this would maybe be called like a cat's eye. Okay. If my kitty cat was still around, you could maybe compare that. Um, um, then there was like the Binghamton. Um, they were made um, out of pottery from Vermont. Um, alleys uh, are a soft stone, usually an alabaster. Um, those are, I don't have any examples of those. And then Aggies, um, they were German marbles um, made in the 1850s. And they were usually black, blue, gray, green, or yellow. Um, and those were kind of more massively, um, you know, massively produced for something from the 1850s. Um, but then people like if you would have marbles and I would have marbles, we would maybe um, like trade them because, you know, maybe I had, um, you know, a dozen or so of some Aggies and you and um, and you had I had cat size. You really liked my cat size. And then we would trade them. Or if we were playing for keepsies, that's how I could, you know, change out my my marble collection. And, that makes sense. Okay, and, so keep these yeah. helps you change out and switch up your collection. All right. Okay. But you know, if I if I really really maybe my collection I got from my birthday from my great aunt and and I really you know I know when next time she comes to town to visit she's going to want to see my marbles and I also maybe you didn't want to say well I'm really not good at marbles and I lost them all to to my neighbor and different things so um. You know. So if somebody wanted to get some marbles to start off, is it hard to find marbles today? It's it's not. Um, okay. um, like I went to my local Dollar Tree and for guess how much? A dollar. A dollar. I got a bag of marbles and it has has my shooter in it, which is the great big one. Okay. And then it had had a just a variety, mostly cat size, but you know, kind of a variety of them. And mm -hmm. so, and even with this, since there's only a few of the more solid of uh, of these, then I could even start, you know, um, wanting to say, well, I really want to be able to collect more of these, and maybe I really only like the orange um, cat size. Yeah, I'm not so fond of the green one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I just said about that with some colors, sometimes having a good collection of them makes it good when you're going to play some games. So if you can see here, I have, you know, a collection of more orange or reddish marbles and I have a collection of blue ones. In a little while, we'll play a game with those. So, 
Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Man, it's just been a few minutes and we've learned so much about our marbles. Right. So do you think maybe we need to, you know, go over just a little bit? Because I really kind of gave a whole lot of information right there um, to, to begin with. Yeah. Okay. So, um, um, so some of the things with the types of marbles may have to do with um, um, their names may may come from from where or how they were made, like um, the um, Bennington's and like the cat's eyes and different things. You know, the one thing that's kind of funny about marbles, and we get ready, we're going to play some marble games. Anything that you do with marbles is playing a game of marbles. So there's not really exactly one one super game well, that's that. Nice that is marbles. And I was kind of funny going through some of it. Um, sometimes just depends on whose website or um, who's, who, where you looked it up, where you got a little bit different difference in the rules, which is kind of cool, but what can that cause? Confusion. Confusion. So if I'm, I'm playing the game and we haven't kind of gone on over all the rules, um, then we can maybe get some people with, you know, some hurt feelings or just maybe not make it as much fun. So yeah. sometimes remembering to go over. So again, if we were sitting here playing the game of marbles and we didn't go over whether we were playing for keepsies or we were um, playing for the fun of it. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end, I grabbed your marbles and took off with them. You can maybe be upset. So it's uh, always yeah. good to make sure we kind of go over all the rules. Mm -hmm. So now you need to help me figure out what, what we need to make sure we're doing because there's a lot of fun things here, but I want to make sure we're, we're covering everything we need to earn this, uh, this belt loop. Because sure. So we've done a lot already. We have talked about the history and we have talked about uh, which is number one, and we've discussed where, um, did we discuss where it began? But you actually, it's really hard because it's kind of hard to know exactly where it began, but we know it was way back in Egypt and things like that. Right, because we said, you know, Native Americans, archaeologists have been able to know that that was played here in, in, um, in the United States or in the, in North America before before we were the United States, um, exactly. and you know, but some of the some so, you know, it's got a really old history. But the really really cool thing that I thought was um, really in the 1800s when when Ohio got to be known as kind of the marble capital, right. not just of Ohio or of the United States, but of the world because we were able to make and ship so many marbles all over the world. Hey, when I said that. Um, do you know that, you know, one of those marbles from that original, you know, factory and everything, I think was, I read, sold for like $27,000 about 10 years ago. Wow. What That's would you crazy. do with a marble that was worth $27,000? Man, that's just nuts. I right. don't know. And it, they were like, you know, not even, not even, uh, you know, you could get th 30 of them for a penny. So now <laughs> I don't think that if any of mine in here, which are mostly the uh, dollar store variety, I really don't think any of them are very old, but I'm really anxious to go maybe um, check at my parents' house and their big old jug of marbles and maybe see you know, if there's some old ones and, you know, now I want to maybe look and say, maybe there's some um, um, alleys or some um, Aggies and, and different things and see maybe what, what are some other marbles they might, they might have. And, you know, there's some that were like commemorative marbles. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people would maybe have gone to a special event, say um, World's Fair or something and inside the glass it would have a little figurine of the event. Now that's pretty cool. I wonder, wonder if they did any, um, like any of the scout jamborees, wonder if they've ever made any, 
any marbles for that. That, that would be, be really interesting to, to know. To kind of check into. And if not, maybe that's something um, they should suggest for the next World Jamboree or something to have some, some cool commemorative uh, marbles. That's awesome. Yeah, okay. so we've talked about that. We talked about the different sizes and what they're made for. And then we also- well, I don't know, did we, did we really? I don't know, did we? Maybe, maybe I did. Did we miss something? Yeah, okay. So, you know, here, these are what might be called just a regular marble, but these here are what's called your shooters. So you can kind of see the difference in size there. Oh, huge difference. Right. I dropped mine on the floor. Oh, now, but I also, if you look at in here on these two shooters, they're a little bit different in size. So mm -hmm. I have a, a, a larger shooter and a smaller shooter, but let's see if people, I don't know, can you, can you really kind of tell the difference there? Oh yeah, for sure. And, those three different sizes of marbles small medium and large right but these these two both of these would be considered shooters yes. and even if you kind of look at these marbles one's a little bit bigger than the other so awesome so one of the things like if you're going to play a game you might have to say well i want to make sure it's going to be fair so our shooters have to be the same size mm -hmm. or you know when we're playing we have to say you're know, really kind of having your marbles all all be kind of more the same size because you know maybe if they're bigger you might have an advantage or if they were smaller you might even have an advantage in the game mm -hmm. okay so that's really interesting about the advantages and disadvantages and things like that depending on your sizes hmm. So if anybody's played marbles before, go ahead and let us know in the in the comments below. Uh, we'd love to know if we have some first time marble players or some um, professional experienced ones. So now we've not hit number two yet at all, Julia. Okay, and number two is learn about three different marble games and then learn to play one of them and how to keep score. Okay, so one of the things I said, anytime you're playing with marbles, it's a what? It's a game. It's a game. So that kind of gives me some ideas that there's a whole variety of marble games. So I'm gonna kind of talk through a couple of them and then, um, and then I'm actually gonna, uh, we're going to play one that I think you and I are going to enjoy. So okay. one of the things like say for what most people think of is the traditional marble game, which is also called ringers, can have two to six players and you're going to need at least 13 marbles and you're going to need one shooter per player. Okay. Okay. And um, ideally you're going to need um, like for here on my driveway, I'm gonna need a piece of chalk. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna to need to be able to draw a circle. I'm gonna go here. And I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I'm not always necessarily the best in drawing a shape. And so I've got my hula hoop here and I'm going to draw my circle around it. Okay, now, in order for shooting, I kind of want you to kind of stay out of the initial circle. Okay. Okay, so there's our, remember we said, this is the ring right here, and this is going to be like our shooting line. Okay, like basketball, right? Yeah. Okay, so we've got our marbles and now we've got our playing field. Right. Okay. With our ring. And then we're gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. 
And now you're putting 13 marbles in there. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna put 13 in, and it said to kind of put them in a in a pattern. Okay. That's a cool pattern. Yeah, so I kind of did across, across from it. Now, guys, um, I have I hear my kitty cat crying, and so I'm gonna go let him out of the uh, closet. Here's a, I'm gonna it. And it's gonna be interesting if he's gonna come right here because he, yes, he likes to be a part of it. And he, uh, when I was playing some marbles the other day, both him and the other cat were having the best time chasing the marbles. So, you know, I'm kind of quarantined and um, can't really get together with too many of my friends to play, but even my cats like to play, like to play marbles. Awesome. Okay, so here you've got this pattern. And then, here we go. So you're gonna get, I can get down so I can, I can shoot. And then there's thing, it's called knuckling. Okay. So see how I'm kind of holding my marble? And I gotta get have one knuckle down. And then I wanna woo, I shoot know. it. And of course, I don't hit a single marble. So I would have, it would be now say your turn. Okay. And then oh, oh. and you know what? It looks so much easier. Ah! Oh. Now, it's my son Philip who's helping out. He actually got it and he got, got the marble. So he gets to keep that. And so now he gets to pick up the shooter again and he gets to shoot again. Ooh. Now this time he didn't hit any. So now it becomes my turn to shoot. Okay. So if you hit now, one and out of the ring that in your, you get to keep it. Right now, you might need to go over some of the rules because there's some of them is that now I would have my own shooter. And so his shooter would stay there. And the next time when he came to shoot, he would come on over here to shoot okay. and different things. But I'm gonna keep myself from getting up so much. <laughs> now, my shooter came out of the ring and what, you could have to agree on the rules and whether to say, well, you know, that doesn't count and I have to put mine back in. And that's what I found so interesting is there's so many different variations on the rules. Um, I also read one set of them was that um, when you shoot and if you don't knock one out, and you have extras, you have to put another marble in and the game keeps going until, until you get, get them all out. Okay. So I guess it kind of depends on how long you want to play and how many people you have playing. So how and about if I try? At the end, if for some reason you run out of time and you don't have enough time to finish the whole game, the person with the most marbles probably is the winner. Right, would be the person. So remember, okay, so this is called what, Brittany? Ringer? No, oh, well, wait, the I marble is called a ringer, oh. but when you go to shoot, what am I doing? Oh, knuckling. Yeah, got it. Knuckle, I can't see you, Julia, so uh, I can't see what you're doing. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm knuckling down. Now, if I go to do it and I, you do a thing where you actually bounce it. Mm -hmm. So like I, and it, and it bounced in, mm -hmm. then um, that is called a, it's called lofting it. Oh, so I remember we went over some of the words. Mm -hmm. so, um, and then when I said where the the shooter was and you stay there, mm -hmm. but say um, I want to, I don't like being over on this side and I get up and I walk around and I circle the, the, the ring here, that's circling. Oh, okay. I was like, wow, all those words make a whole lot of sense, don't they? A lot more. Yes. Okay, Eddie, you wanna you wanna see if you can get it? Okay. Meow. Let's see if my what, what my cat thinks. Hmm. Huh? 
guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I don't know if he's. Oh, wow. Philip got a whole bunch out that time. <laughs> Jeez. He's yeah. A, he's a, what, it's a ringer. He's a ringer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm trying to think. Um, he may have done this when he was when he was in Cub Scouts. Maybe oh. sounds like a like an activity we did at a at a Bear Den meeting, and that was just just a couple of years ago, right, Philip? Yes, of course. <laughs> just a few. Just a few, because you know, now, how far did you make it in scouting, Philip? All the way to Eagle. All the way to Eagle. Oh, awesome! Man. Fantastic. And I think I remember you also doing like what was called order of the arrow and, and driving you places and driving you to camp and all and over. Yes. Yeah. Have lots of fond memories at scout camp. Okay. Awesome. I actually think you even worked at scout camp um, a I couple heard. of summers. I did. I worked on staff with Brittany at Beaumont for a few years. Just a few. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so guys, you know, so if you realize that um, my son's a little bit old, he has to now need to come and help me up because um, getting getting down to play marbles is uh, maybe not my my skill set anymore. Okay, so this is kind of like the traditional game of marbles called Ringer. Okay. And then there's something called playing a color match. Mm. And so do you think maybe here I've maybe set up a color match? I think so. I think so. So um, you, know, you would be one color and I'd be the other. Okay. And we each have our, our shooters. Mm -hmm. And um, just like kind of like we did there on ringers, we would take turns and um, shooting them out. but um here um if i had the blue ones and you had the orange ones i'm trying to get my blue ones out and not get your orange ones out and you know, different things and right now i kind of have them separated so you can see them but mm -hmm. you probably have them a little more mixed up okay. and different things so then it would would make a little bit a little bit more of a difference and so if I knock, knock one of yours out. Then um, I get to keep it, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, I really don't want to knock yours out, even though I'm trying to get mine. And I think that kind of reminds me a little bit like if you're playing pool, and sometimes when you play pool, you um, maybe you're playing odds or evens or different things. And um, so. And versus having to have a pool table and cues and everything, you get to sit here and play with marbles. Ooh. So that's another game. Cool. Ah, Philip already got he got one out. Oh I man. Have a feeling that uh maybe I maybe I'm just getting a little too old for playing marbles, but or maybe maybe uh Cub Scouts, once a Cub Scout, always a Cub Scout. I guess uh that might be it. Okay. Okay, so that's that was kind of game number two, and that was called mobile mo um, color match. And then okay. we're supposed to do three of them. Yeah, three. Okay, so this other one is called eggs in a basket. Ooh, that's different. And yeah. So guess what you use? I the used an egg, egg carton. And then inside, I was able to write different amounts. Okay. So tens and ones and hundreds, zero, five. I even have a negative. Ooh. A negative 50 and a negative 10. We don't want to get so, that. Right. So one of the things, again, you know, we've got the different color marbles and we set up and how far you have to sit back to do it. And we're gonna see who gets the most points. And so like here, I've got my, my line back here. So I'm gonna to wanna to stay behind my piece of duct tape when I'm shooting it. <laughs> but maybe with this, I'm gonna to need to loft it. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Oh, wow. I'm 
trying to get. Uh. Oh, what is uh. that? Uh. Okay, how am I? How are we doing? What's your points? It's a math game too. You gotta. Oh add yes, it is. Oh wow, I'm getting those ones that get kind of filled up. On oh, that one, just bounced it out, and it bounced it out of a. Uh, a 50 ah. uh oh to a zero. Oh. Oh. oh no well let's see we uh nick says you can never be too old to play marbles <laughs> how about to lose your marbles <laughs> oh looks like i like getting them in the in the 50 there is that negative the other one Next to it is 75, but the one in the bottom is. Oh, uh, okay, was the negative. So mm -hmm. now we would. No, which which color were you, Brittany? Um, I was the orange. Okay, so you're gonna start doing some adding up here. There. So okay. you have, you got a piece of paper? Yeah, I sure do. Okay, you got two at 75. Okay, so 150. Oh, but then you got a negative 50. So 100. 100. And then you got a 5. So 105. Okay. And then here in my 50, you got a 50. 155. And another 50. 205. And another 50. 255. 255. Wow. Okay. So. Oh, wait, I have a zero. Oh, okay. And I have a 75. Woo! And another five. I've got 80. Nice. Oh, you've got 255, and I have 80. Mm -hmm. And I got another zero. Oh. And I got a 50. Man. I got 130. And how many did you get? 255. Oh, well, man, I'm good. Wait, wait a second. So does that mean what do you I need to send you? Is it a bottle of syrup or a thing of pancake mix? A uh, thing of pancake mix. A thing of pancake mix. And you want pancakes and not the um, the corn, the corn muffins? Yeah, I really like that pancake mix. I can do a lot of stuff with it not just pancakes i can do apple crisp and all that fun stuff oh yeah i saw when you did that was that also another bear activity uh no it was a just one of our demonstrations but you could use oh, it for one okay. of the i think you might be doing an apple crisp coming up in a couple uh a week or two okay so i need to get um get busy and get that sent out to you so you'll have have some uh pancake mix for that apple crisp right yep mm-hmm okay so now what was the name of that game that was a basket yes so i really like like that one and and um so except uh, except i didn't win but i still i really like it and the other thing with this is i've got my marbles in it i've got it all closed up contained. and it, it makes it pretty easy to uh, to take it on the road. So Ooh. when we can get out to camp and, and some things, then I'll have I'll have it all ready for us to play. Yep, perfect. That's fantastic. So okay. those are some fun games. Now, what are we gonna do next, Julia? What are you gonna do? What? What are we gonna do? Ooh, you made a mess over there. Yeah, I am. I made a mess. And so, but it's it's just the beginning of, of having some fun. Okay. So, so right here, I've got some marbles and they're sitting in different colors of paint. Ooh. And I have another box here and I have some letters and I have like this one. Thank you for being a keeper of the flames. Ooh. Okay, so I gotta tell you a little bit about that right here. I have a family that are friends, good friends, and they really all like, like scouting. And they have two of their boys are Eagle Scouts and the other one's on his way. 
and they've been really committed to scouting. And they started with back in Cub Scouts. And I called them up and said, hey, would you be willing to become a keeper of the flames for our council and help support our council? Because all the great, wonderful things we're doing, like um, these online uh, den meetings and everything. And they said, sure. And so I'm really excited that they went to the website and they signed up to become a keeper of the flames. And I just want to send them a personalized note thanking them. Ooh. And I could just, you know, sit there and write a little note and put it in the mail. I could have emailed them, but I thought, oh, I think they really would get a really nice thank you out of it if I made it a little special. Ooh. And so I'm going to take those marbles and they're in the different color and we're gonna put it here. We're gonna shake it around and it's gonna decorate it. And then this one is just a happy May because I have a friend who um, who actually fell uh, on, at Easter and broke her wrist. And, you know, she's just having a hard time, you know, getting around and, and different things. And, um, and I just thought she might need some cheering up. And That's so I nice. wanted to decorate a card and put it out in the mail to her too. So I'm kind of, y'all are helping me with, with some of my thank you notes. Perfect. So I'll put those and then okay. I'll come over here and really make a mess because it's a yeah. perfect outside activity. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I guess it uh started to dry a little bit while we were waiting to to get to doing it. Oh my. Yeah. That's drying paint. <laughs> yeah. I did not think it would quite would quite do this. So uh did maybe my the back of your uh your thingy bobber your paintbrush scissors ah scissors yeah <laughs> now kids be careful if you're uh let your parents do this if you get it stuck like this let his mom do it okay oh man they're all stuck in there they are <laughs> wow Okay, I got the yellow one out. Nice. Oh, I like. Um, Nick said, "Eggs in the in a basket, just like his favorite breakfast." <laughs> but would that would that breakfast be even better with some pancakes with Scout's own maple syrup on it? Okay, well, you know what? We might just be doing a three color. Ooh, that's cool. I, uh, you know what that looks like? What? Cub Scout colors. Yes. Okay. So, and, and actually, like my my uh, my family's my two friends that I'm going to be sending it to, they'll get a, a real kick out of it because um, um, they've uh, known me to be doing uh, Cub Scout crafts and for for many for many years and uh maybe checking off with them and seeing which ones are are things that uh that their family would like to say the the one who has the um the scout who's you know they're already an eagle scout is kind of one of philip's best best friends and um and he's actually also now a, a keeper of the flame so uh um so maybe I should have done two two notes and sent one to one to him and one to his uh, to his family. family. Because, uh, oh, so. Okay, so that that was that that activity and it's a lot of fun. You can do it with a uh, you know poster paint and lots of lots of different things, but kind of turning and making a a little craft a little craft out of. Uh, of what we're doing that's awesome i love it so one of the things when i was writing down all the marble terms was bowling mm -hmm. and um i don't know if you um have you ever bought any of these uh erasers at the um 
and to have on the back of your pencils? Probably not, because Brittany, I know you don't make too many mistakes. You uh, <laughs> you kind of, you know, know when you're when you go to do something and kind of get it right right off. But um, oh, some man. of us, <laughs> some of us, not not so much. Um, I do love those though. In school, they were my favorite thing. They were your favorite thing. So I am saying that here's a cool thing to do with them. Um, first, the wind's gonna blow a little bit. I can set it up and that kind of looks like a like at the bowling alley, a set of pins. Sure does. And what do you think I'm gonna do? You're gonna bowl. Right, and I could like knuckle down Ooh. and see how many I knock over. Hey, I did better on this than I did on the when we were playing the ringers. You sure did. And, and guess what? This is a game of marbles. Hey. Yeah, because I used a marble to play. Okay, so I'm like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one's kind of still standing up, so I'm gonna, you know, put it put back. back up. Yeah. So, and I think, oh, uh, I think I probably put more, um, more erasers than they're actually bowling pins. So yeah. uh, maybe uh, I'm gonna do it one more time, and I only oh, get one. Fun. But you know. But you know, you could even maybe do it with the same. Uh, if I would have gotten them all down, it would have been a strike. And if I gotten uh, at this time all down, it would have been a spare. And doing the adding up like you would do when you're at the bowling alley. Which one of these days, maybe we'll all get to go bowling again. Doesn't that, that sound like fun? That would that would be awesome. But until then, we, we can, can bowl make at home. Marble bowling alley game. Nice. Yeah. So man, so we created a game and we created a, a craft. So that's actually right. Uh, is four B is create your own game using marbles. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Okay. So I think maybe going down a little further, is there is there something about um with a maze? There is. It's make a marble maze. Okay. So I was online and there are these people and they took the like a cookie sheet. And they use Play-Doh and they, they made all sorts of track area, like the mazes that you do in the, in the books and everything. Mm -hmm. And they were really cool and elaborate. And I don't have the patience, <laughs> but I made Ooh. a maze out of some things that were in my recycling bin. You know, I, I had a Gatorade it. box and, um, and we got something in the mail and it came with a piece of styrofoam. And this is what, what I had my ketchup, mustard and relish was all hooked in on that. And yes. Toilet paper, paper rolls. Yes, I mean, there's, I, can't, I can't throw them out because it was so hard to get toilet paper these last few months. Yes. And up here is a part from a soda bottle. Cool. So I think I want my marble to come in and I want it to kind of travel down and go in and, and land right there. Okay. Okay. Let's see. You can move, maybe move. So, can yeah, can y'all see that? We can. Oh. 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 Maybe I might need to give it a. Oh. Oh. I love marbles, but you know, I'm not necessarily the best with them. Oh, you made it to the end. <laughs> so, but, and I've, I've seen online where people do a whole lot of great elaborate ones. And then, and then there's also, if you kind of do it and then, then tip it this way, and then you can have a little more control and like pinball, make it go back. And, ooh, and then get maybe get them and different things. So can hit to me. And with this, I could have even made some things. I can maybe even put some points and different things. So, you know, maybe I want to try to get it in the in the ring there. And maybe that would have gotten me some points and different things. So that's another another thing, just using some of the recycles that you have at home. Cool. And make. So I have.
had fun doing it. I had fun watching you do it. Okay. I'm trying to think. Oh, you remember earlier I was talking about um when I was talking about this, how much my kitty cats enjoyed doing marbles? Yes, I do. Yeah. Well, what I have here is I have a marble track. Ooh. Yes. So I took two um full noodles because the pool's not open right now. Um, and so we could do it and we could race and see which marbles came out fastest. Okay. And, um, and I was kind of doing it. My cats were uh, were catching on and, and bapping with them. Now, the other thing is um, if you had a pool noodle that if you wanted just one pool noodle and you wanted to um, cut it lengthwise, mm -hmm. and then you would have two channels and you could uh, race them. And then I was looking on online and um, someone had done race tracks with their train tracks. So Philip, you remember if we would have gone and gotten all your um, Thomas the Tank Engine wooden track out and then you know, on the train table, we would have built it and you can have where it can have to go up the hill and down the hill and around the curves and different things. When my boys were younger, we had, I don't know, hundreds of pieces of Thomas the Tank Engine track. We uh -huh. played hours of Thomas the Tank Engine. But I no. thought that was kind of cool. So maybe someone, is anyone watching? Do they have a, a wooden train set? Maybe they still have it. Um, I know at one point we even had a couple of trains engines that had batteries. Ooh, and that sounds what, fun. Uh, put a marble in, see how far uh, Thomas could push it around on the track. But I got to show you all, I think, I don't know where, where Eddie's gotten to. <laughs> and this was actually um, 4C to create a marble racetrack and having at least two lanes so you can race your favorite marbles against each other. Okay, so. You ready? I'm gonna put on the count of three. I'm gonna drop them. Oh okay, yeah, well, I already did it. Again, <laughs> one, two, two three. three. Oh, the orange one won. Yeah. So one of the things you could do is um, you could um, have them on the have them, and you could see like and. You know, do they hit? Do they keep hitting in the same place? So when I was doing it in my living room, I kind of sat back on the sofa and I had um, probably you know, four, four yards and to see, you know, how far they went mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, and whether they would hit and it was fun to see how fast I could, I could kind of put them through nice and stuff but that's when i had them and then the cat started chasing after them and, and different things oh yes now now you come to, to see what's going on it's also a good way to lose a cue uh, and if you do this um scouts you need to make sure you definitely pick them up so, i don't know about the floor you're doing it on but on my uh carpeting in my my rug in my living room um, it would be really easy to uh maybe not see them and it wouldn't be any any fun for someone to to like walk in and step on them and um, twist an ankle or or hurt themselves so, yeah that wouldn't be fun at all but and then again um scouts if you got any little um any little siblings and different things, you always need to watch out because marbles are a nice size and you don't want to put them in your mouth because they could cause a cause a choking, choking hazard. hazard. You want to make sure we're, we're being nice and safe. I think maybe that's why bears do it. They get their bears are so responsible because they get to learn about pocket knives and they get to play with marbles and, and little things that um, maybe that are, are lions and tigers um might not be able to to deal to deal with mm -hmm. 
So, okay, so you want to make sure, let's see, see what all we've gotten, gotten done. I'm, I'm thinking we're pretty close. We pretty much, we pretty are pretty much close are. So we've done one, discuss with your family the history. We've done two, learn about three different games and play one. We've done three, which is learn four or five words that are used when talking about marbles and, and how it relates. And for number four, you have to do one of A, B, C, or D. But we've actually done, we've created our own game, which is B. We've made a, a marble racetrack, which is C. And we've done make a maze out of it. So we've done three out of the four. Okay. Now, I think number five, which is an optional one, was with a parent to make a, a bag. Yes, a marble bag. Yeah. So I think they show in the um, bear handbook that you cut a piece of material and get someone to help you sew it and you put a, a string through it to make, to make a bag. Yes, that is so exactly. That, that's definitely needing a sewing machine. Now. This I kind of showed, um, and this is a piece of a piece of leather, and you could, with just a round circle, punch holes in it and thread um, shoelace through, mm -hmm. and then you could have a marble bag. Or one of my favorite marble bags is a this sock. This happened to be a small sock. Nice. And, um, and then, actually, with a pair. I can have my shooters in one bag. Mm -hmm. And then this other bag has my other marbles. So if I'm going somewhere, I want to make sure I take both sets mm -hmm. and to make sure it doesn't, they don't go falling out just every which way when I put the bag down. I used a hair tie. Oh, perfect. So um, now I will tell you my kitty cats aren't happy because this is what I make their catnip socks out of. Uh -huh. They really like their catnip socks, but they also like playing with the marbles. So I think they agreed that it was okay for me to do that. Now, so you got my hair tie and I can also do it around one more time because you know, if I get to someone's house or I go out somewhere and I want to play a, a game of ringer, and I would need to have my my shooters along with my marbles. And this way I've got it all together. Awesome. So I did it without having to sew. Woo. Fantastic. You can see that's the picture. This person, all they used was a thing of fabric. They put, poked some holes and they stuck a, uh, looks like a shoelace or of some sort in there. And then they just cinched it together. Awesome. Mm hmm So I'm thinking that um, I'm looking forward to getting together and uh, playing some marbles, maybe out at camp or on the on the playground. But I'd love for people to, you know, you know, maybe play some and post post a video. Um, and, um, so we so we can see that again. If anyone has any questions about um, becoming a keeper of the flame go right to the Lake Erie Council website and, um, and, and do that. That would be a great way to show your support and to help us to continue all these awesome things that we're doing. Another way to support us is with our Scout Zone products. Again, Brittany, I will get you a thing, a pancake mix out in the mail and folks tune in to learn about making that apple crisp with the uh, um, pancake mix. Now, do you also use maple syrup in that? I sure do. You do. Well, I, I'm only going to be sending you the pancake mix. So maybe you have to find someone else to play marbles with. And maybe uh, if you do for um, for keeps, um, instead of keeping for the marbles, maybe you can get yourself another uh, thing of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I want to one, one other quick thing about the upcoming blood drive. And I'm hoping maybe some scouts and their, their parents will uh, be able to come and out help out our community awesome i think we've had a great day uh some of the takeaways are we have to use observation and listening skills we've had to follow directions and instructions we've had we're working as a team 
we're developing our creativity because we got to create some games. We are living by the Scout Oath and Law. We're helping others. We're practicing good sportsmanship, right? And we're being friendly to each other as we play our games. So we've had a great day. We've gone over lots of fun stuff. I don't know about you, but I think we are ready to end our den meeting for the day. Well, I look forward to when uh, next time you invite me to help out with the den meeting. And I think tomorrow, um, did it's I hear you're going to be doing some stuff with some tools? We sure will be. Our AOL and our Weeblos den meeting tomorrow is the Fixit Adventure. So we're, I'm pretty excited about that one. Okay, well, I might need to um, um, tune into that one. Maybe I get some good, some good tips on some um, things that I've noticed that need fixing around here. Awesome. Well, everybody have a fantastic evening. We are glad you're able to join us. I'll hopefully see you tomorrow. If not, we'll hopefully see you next week. Have a good one. Good night. Good night.